Hello, welcome back. Another episode on Bob. Bob. I can't do it as well as Rowan Atkinson, sorry. Um, anyway, Bob is unbobbed. Look at that. It's all welded back together again. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. There's plenty more to come. Bob is going to be a fairly intensive project now in the run-up to the end of this year because he's got a new owner. Going to finish it. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down if you absolutely have to. Comments down there somewhere if you're playing on your computer. Um, if you want to contact me, Church House Classics, it is all one word. I might have to change that at some point. At gmail.com. Um, I've also got a website, Church House Classics. It's all one word, dot co dot uk. Um, I'm also setting up a Twitter feed as well. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. I think it might be more likely using the Twitter feed to promote my um, YouTube channel. If you're watching on the telly and you fancy supporting the channel or buying me a pint, there's a linky thing down here, PayPal me link, um, which will help you on your quest to furnish me with ale or support the channel. Anyway, enjoy the video. Uh, this is obviously the underside of the chassis. I'm going to recheck my measurements on the underside of the chassis and make sure everything still aligns. Um, I've got the level edge. So looking at the diagram, this edge here is the one that I want to be measuring the up and down movement up this end. Um, but that's part of the reason, excuse me, why I cut along this curve here. Because then I would have the entire length of this curve along with that point right there and that point right there. Although he's gotten in a little bit. I haven't welded this bit yet, by the way. Um, and similarly over here. Uh, and what I'm going to do here, it looks like there's a huge gap, and there is a huge gap. All of this green shite is going to get cut off. Um, and I shall weld, butt weld, a new piece of 2mm steel that replicates this whole section here. From there to there, once I know everything is absolutely spot on and aligned correctly. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it. Okay, time to start welding this thing. I'm fed up with measuring it. So basically what I've been doing, it's actually a lot easier to double check things when it's upside down. So rather than working with um, point FF, which is in the middle of this cross member here, uh, what I've basically done is gone from the center point of the um, bolt hole on that outrigger. It's not lined up anymore, but it was. I've, I've kind of measured that one and kind of found that center point by using a plumb line. Easiest way of doing it. Alternatively, I can put the sp spirit level on the edge of, sorry, spirit level, set square on the edge of the uh, spirit level, which I know is a straight edge, but the plumb line gives me a gravity fueled um, uh, level. So I measure from that point to this point, absolutely bang on. And then looking at the manuel, we're looking at that point to that point, to point FF is 26, but then we need to take 29 off because 29 takes us back to the center line for the uh, sill outrigger, the rear sill outrigger. Once we've got that, what we then need to do is add 29 and 31 to go from the center line of the rear sill outrigger to the center line of the rear outrigger. And this is kind of what I've just finished doing now. Um, so we put this across the top, uh, make sure that we get an absolute vertical. I mean, it's not going to look vertical now because kind of kind of depends on where I stand really doesn't it but uh, if you see what I mean so this is why I'm using plumb lines uh, really just to make sure I get the absolute you know vertical on it then using my long spirit level which is level I have checked it both directions leveling it up as much as I can using washers so I get the thing absolutely level and I measure from that right angle there with a black rod joins in with the spirit level up to this line here which I've put onto the end of the spirit level, which is directly above the center point for the hole in the rearmost outrigger. Absolutely spot on. There is no issue with that at all. It's square, it's straight. It's being welded. I'm not measuring any more. Um, but it absolutely, it definitely pays to have, you know, me measure many, 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 many times. And I've measured this in both orientations. I've measured it the right way up and I'm now measuring it upside down and nothing is wrong with it. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to dress this edge up here. Now that is a welded plate on the bottom there. Um, I might just see if we get the angle grinder in there and tidy some of this shit up and see what's going on under here. Um, and then ultimately I want to get 
couple of big tags along the bottom here for now. Um, get that all welded in uh, and then flip it over uh, and do the other side and then I can start dressing the edges and so forth and getting these, the, the, these sections here boxed in. Now, when it comes to that, I have got no end of big lumps of box section off this chassis, yeah, which are all really useful. Just give them a quick going over with the, uh, with the angle grunt. It's got the right profile on it. So from that, um, from the chunk I've got over there, which is the old uh, leading gearbox end, I've put the original spring mount up there. Um, I need to cut these fellas off whoosh, like that and just weld that back onto the chassis. But I think first and foremost, we're going to get the big chunk here, either side of the spring mounting welded up, work on this section in here. Uh, I'll just get it all done. Stop gabbing on about it. Well, the weather's picked up. Um, right, okay, so this is the driver's side because, of course, we're upside down. You need to adjust your sets. Um, I've got a, quite a few um, welds that I need to tidy up. But basically, what I've tried to do here is to do all of the welding I need to do on the underside. Oh, there's a hole there. And weld that bastard up. Um, welded in the bracket for the um, aft chuck absorber. Which is good because I'll just get a drill drill right the way through. That's good. Done the closing piece on the chassis rail there. What I need to do on this side is join up the chassis rail. So th this gap down here, I've got to fill that somehow. Uh, get a slither of metal in there, fill it, um, and then uh, put the closing piece back in again. It won't be that piece, but that's the piece that I cut out of. So I just use that for size, you see. Um, and then on this, I need to crack on with this tomorrow which is ready to seam weld that rail together, get all that all done and dusted, um, and then grind all these welds flat. There's a few of them, as you can see, and then flip it. Um, and then I can work on the other side. Um, yeah, that's coming on all right though, isn't it? Pleased enough with that. It's been a day of fiddling and fucking around, welding, cutting, welding, cutting, welding, sitting down on my chair, playing my phone, welding, cutting, welding, cutting, sitting down on my chair, playing my phone, um, and then enjoying the weather. Yes. So I'll have this uh, welding finished tomorrow. I'm almost out of gas as well, which is a pain in the ass. I've decided to stop welding at this point in the day. And uh, actually start getting it all back together again. few slugs on there isn't there I don't know what they coat the inside of the chassis with but uh, yes it certainly had some fun with some flames I think once all these welds are all ground back you're not going to know I've been here when I took the chassis up I'll, I'll cut this piece off here I didn't know how long to cut it to but I just need to grind all the welds flat and then prep it for painting Okie dokie, right, um, I've ground back all the welds here, um, I've just put a skim of um, zinc primer there because I want to weld these original um, mounts back on again, they're going to fit, um, so I don't see any reason why I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, we're all largely complete at the underside of the back end, we still need to weld the top side, but I want to clean all this rust back up here first of all, give it a treat, get all the crap off here as we have with the rest of the chassis. Uh, so when I flip it over, I don't need to flip it back again uh, in order to, you know, in, in order to finish it. So I probably won't paint today, but I will certainly get rid of a lot of this uh, surface corrosion and, and mud and contamination. Uh, at the front end here, I chopped off. This is the driver's side outrigger. The chassis is upside down at the moment. You don't need to turn your television up the other way. So if you remember correctly, 
that piece was in there and there was a big hole at the front and there was a big hole at the back and it just it didn't look very nice it looked like someone had been through it with a gas axe at some point so off the other chassis off the spare chassis i've salvaged this piece and i'm going to butt weld that in okay i opted to keep the end piece here because i think whoever broke the car the chap in um in carnarvon who broke the car used a gas axe in order to cut through bolts and so forth which is fair enough it's the easy way of taking a car apart really isn't it and he's salvaging it uh, scrap and so forth so I'm going to butt weld that in there and then that will be this outrigger complete I'll do those two at the back and then I want to um, probably uh, what I'll probably end up doing is, is flipping it over in order to do the front end to do the engine mount and so forth because I've got engine mount passenger side driver's side but I haven't got one passenger side again chassis upside down as you can see here um, but this is way more fun than presidential elections or COVIDs or anything else. I've, I've just, radio's gone off because I'm fed up with listening to the news. It's not fun. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way the welds have, the welds have ground back. As I say, I still need to do the other side. Uh, but once this is all painted, it's going to look more than presentable. And it's certainly strong. There's no doubt about that. Uh, right, I shall put you on time lapse while I'm uh, welding that chap. Charles back on two axles again. Starting to look like a Range Rover again. Not. Anyway, just to me. And this is got you guys need whatever you're doing right now, this has got to be more interesting than US presidential elections. Fucking COVID. What's going on in Westminster or Holyrood? So this is the side I've not welded up yet, but you can see it all lines up beautifully. So the objective really now is to finish off welding the top side of this, um, finish off cleaning back this chassis, get the chassis painted. Uh, it might seem a bit like I've come too soon by putting the axles on it, um, but actually I want to paint around the axles anyway, so it's not really a problem. All I'll do is support the uh, chassis upwards uh, when, when I paint above the axles. It's not going to be a problem, it's going to be spray painted anyway, so I wanted the whole bloody thing off the floor. Um, so we've got the whole front axle mechanism in, panard rods in, all poly bushed, looking really good, very nice. Pleased with all this, please don't be back on its, uh, on its axles again. Still got the comedy tyres on the front. Um, I need to find another couple of wheels that I can put on this thing, um, slave wheels, and then I'll be sorting out um, the real wheels at some point. Uh, but now it's manoeuvrable, you see. And here we've got that will be the plate there for the damper mount um yeah no i'm really pleased with this i think as a job goes that ain't bad at all good effort eh? and we can still argue that three well over three quarters probably four fifths of the chassis is still original right one thing i do want to do though is i've got to weld this um this engine mount on over here um because I can't do an awful lot until I've got that ready in place. Now, what I was planning on doing, because I've obviously liberated that one, I need to grind this top edge back here so it's flush, line that up, and just mark off where it is I need to chop off. Then he can weld on. But he needs to weld on effectively, he needs to weld on about there. In fact, it looks like if I grind that piece back there, I'll be able to get a mark on exactly where I need that to cut off. I might not, oh sorry, I might not fire at the angle grinder just now. Um, I've got another favourite tool, I mean I've used it in the past and someone did suggest that I got hold of it and I've, I've, what basically happened is I've loaned it to someone and I can't remember who I've loaned it to and they've been very kind in that they haven't returned it back to me. Uh, that's the unit, 
Needle scaler. These things are awesome. So I bought a brand spanking new one off Clark. They had an offer on. But this works beautifully at getting into all these areas and taking all the shit off. Good, huh? Um, I still need to cut these sections out and weld in there. I'll get the needle scaler in there and clean all that crap up as well. Um, I didn't buy, it would appear, I didn't buy the A-frame bushes, which I'm a little bit irritated about. I've got all the other bushes apart from the A-frame bushes. So I don't know if I forgot to order them or whether they were never delivered, but I can't find them anywhere. So that's a bit of a pain in the arse because I can't mount the A-frame up. And because I can't mount the A-frame up, I can't put the springs on it. And that is a pain in the arse. Um, but I can, I can work around that. Probably aim to get the chassis painted first of all. Oh, it's all a bit of a laugh, isn't it, really? Ah, oh. <laughs> I honestly don't mind if I do. Yes, I think that's decent enough. Um, I'll pop you up here. I don't know what you're looking at now. Still no confirmation on the uh, Wiccan unit, which I'm annoyed about. Oh, that is not bad. <sighs> That's the Witchwood Brewery Hobgoblin Ruby. 4.5%. Drink responsibly. Respect alcohol, it says here. I love you, alcohol. I don't know if that's respecting it or not. Is that respecting it? I've got no idea. Right. So, what are we going to do now? Probably a bit... Mind you, the weather's so fucking shit. I probably could go over it with a needle scaler and clean all these areas up. I don't want to be firing at the angle grinder and going at it for hours with the angle grinder because I just think that's not fair on the neighbours now. Um, mind you, it could be that the neighbours aren't being fair on me. I'll tell you what we could do. We could put a list together of all the bits that I need for next phase. So let's... So I've got the Boge top mount. Um, I'm going to need uh, the Boge uh, gaiters and uh, Jubilee clips. I'm going to need A-frame poly. I've ordered all the panels to refurbish the bulkhead because as soon as this chassis is painted I really want to have the bulkhead onto the chassis. Um, and start working on that. Um, get the bulkhead, the front and the wings all sorted out. And then I can move then on to the body side frames. Now I can't fix the, the, the front. I found this out last time when I was doing a car. With the bulkhead in place, the next thing after the bulkhead you need to fix onto the chassis is the body side frames. Um, so I've ordered up the sills, um, inner and outer, complete sills. Um, I've got the top frame, but I don't really know what I'm doing with the body frame yet. I do need a windscreen header rail. I've ordered up 10 body mounts and a rear cross member. So we've got the rear cross member ordered. Um, I want to get the engine and gearbox back on the car. So we're going to need to clean the gearbox. So I need the gasket set for that. LT95. Um, and then really, I'm going to be juggling my time really between doing the, oh, you're looking at me, you're looking at me. Between doing the, uh, the bulkhead, the welding, the painting, and the engine and gearbox transmission. Both axles are built. I need to finish painting the front axle. So that can be done with a spray gun, that's not really a problem. I've got the springs, haven't got the dampers, so I need dampers. Uh... <clears throat> I'll tell you one thing I did realise while I was um, sort of pondering on this. I'm going to put my woolly on because it's uh, 
The weather's less inclement, or most inclement, let's say. Is it inclement or is it not inclement? The weather is most inclement, Vicar. Um, <clears throat> what I was doing, when I was pondering the uh, the alignment of this, this, this chassis, I actually came to quite a dazzling conclusion on this thing. So all the alignment is done to the centre of these holes, wherever they might be. Now, you will notice more often than not that the hole is not drilled in the middle of the mount. None of them, not one of these is drilled anywhere near the middle. Do you think... Oh, that was not far off. Do you think... That was in the middle. That when they did the chassis, when these chassis were welded together, they were done to, I don't know, half an inch tolerance. And then they used the large mounting washer on here and drilled them in alignment. Because I think <laughs> they may have done. <laughs> it just suddenly dawned on me while I was uh, messing around with the car. Strange, huh? I can only think that is the case, though. Uh, the paint I'm going to use on this thing, by the way, I'm going to use a um, a one-to-one -one chassis paint. It's probably in the container, but I'll go through that anyway. It's a one-to-one -one chassis paint from Rust Buster. Um, I need to make sure that all of the loose crap is off the chassis. All of the rust has been treated. Um, but the one-to-one -one chassis paint actually is designed to go over bare metal. Not over loose rust, though. So I need to do some work up here. Clean that all up. Um, and then once the chassis is painted, uh, at some point, I'm going to have to go over it with a proper rust-proofing um, wax to inject into the chassis rails, to go right away through the chassis rails. Because uh, pretty much everywhere I've been welding... Um, has been on fire at some point um, because the, you know the, the weld is heating up the uh, the wax too much. Fuel tank would be quite a good thing, wouldn't it? Yes. Brakes come a fair way down the line, so obviously I want to get the body frame sorted out first of all. Engine, transmission, body frame, and then brakes suspension keep the axle keep the chassis as low as we possibly can while we're doing all this shit it does not make life easier i'm at the front i've just loose fitted um, a pair of um, bump stops on the axle i might do exactly the same thing on the back but until the self-leveling strut is in place the back axle is inclined to rotate on its pivot um on, on these um, on these trading arms here so it's not going to be located properly um, right, I'm going to need a drill bit, aren't I, to drill these uh, shocker mounts out. Oh my goodness! <clears throat> Let me put you back up there again. If you look at me writing notes and chuntering. Um, a frame poly, jewelry clips, dampers, and drill bit for rear damper mounts. Get it tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, hump day. So tomorrow morning, um, I'm going to finish off this welding. I think I might have a quick go at it, you know, in a, in a minute because the welding is not too noisy. I just need to be on fire watch for a period afterwards. Um, but uh, I'm more worried um, about the grinding sparks and the effect of that. Um, what I do, do tend to use, you can see it over in the background over there, the white thing. That's a, that's a fire blanket, large fire blanket. Very good as a welding shield, um, so I tend to manoeuvre it around the barn. Um, you've also noticed in some of the videos that when I'm grinding the arm, um, when I'm working with the grinder sparks, I am actually directing the grinder sparks into me rather than just into the back of the barn. Now it might seem like that's a bit of a mad thing to do, um, but overalls are a lot cheaper to replace than a barn. Um, and I'm just trying to concentrate uh, really the grinder sparks into a particular location. I've got a whole bucket of grinder sparks over there somewhere. Um, 
I've also got a leather apron, which I tend to wear when I'm welding. Um, it does protect against large blobs of molten metal coming down and resting in my private area, which is not pleasant. I've been there before. Um, and uh, it's actually quite good because that thing will accommodate grinder sparks quite nicely. It's probably very magnetic now, that leather, leather apron. I'll probably try it out later on. But uh, yeah. I think today's been pretty productive. It moves. Look. That's not a wheel bearing, that's just the A frame touching the chassis over there. It moves. I think that is a Brucey bonus. You've done well, Richard. This week's target was to get this thing back on its axles. Okay, so I really want to have. Um, the A-frame and everything mounted up as well, but I'm not going to be able to do that until the parts arrive. But I will finish the welding, I will finish the prep for paint, and I will probably start the paint tomorrow. Uh, Friday, I am out all day long, dropping Red Shed with his new owner. <coughs> Which means that Sandy, the Landy, who is not forgotten, rest not, Sandy the Landy is going to go into the body tunnel. I'm not sure yet what is happening with Sandy the Landy. I've been thinking about um, some merch campaign um, to raise funds for Sandy the Landy. If I can raise some of the funds. Um, like I say, we're talking about to re-chassis Sandy the Landy. We're talking in the region of about 3,000 quid plus my time. Now, if I'm doing it as a pro bonio project for shits and giggles, then all well and good. Uh, but at the moment, I've got paid work um, i.e. Bob um, and other bits and bobs that are kicking around as well that my dad's currently is doing so Sandy is, is kind of taking a little bit of a back step but I want to get it into the poly tunnel so sorry get him no it's a car get it into the poly tunnel um, so that uh, it's not going to suffer the rigours of the uh, North Devon winter and then have a look at what I'm going to do with that next year I still fancy it as a works vehicle well, if I do that, if I decide it's going to be a works vehicle, then there won't be any fundraiser for it. <clears throat> there might still be merch, though, but it just won't be going towards Sandy. I've been wearing ear, ear defenders as well. You've noticed that in the video. Uh, my, my ears have been struggling. I've struggled with my ears all of my life. Pardon, you're saying? Pardon? Pardon? No, I struggle with my knee years. It's easy for me to say. Uh, all my life, and uh, no, I decided that perhaps I really should wear ear defenders. I don't always wear um, the visor either, which is a bit bad. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. Wear a visor. Wear gloves. Wear so much PPE that you cannot feel the job that you're working on. <coughs> that was uh, another thing. These welding gauntlets that I got. So I had a pair of welding gauntlets before and they were absolutely outstanding because when you had them on you could more or less put your finger up behind the piece of work you were working on and weld through it, just blanking the hole off. And these, these gauntlets are nowhere near as insulated as the ones I had before. I certainly feel the heat through these things. Um, again, I probably need to get a decent pair of gauntlets, another decent pair of gauntlets. I thought they were a decent pair of gauntlets, but they weren't anywhere near as decent as the ones I had before. It's a laugh, isn't it? All is quiet in the world. Go mad, Richard. <laughs> Celebrating hub day, you see, because it's downhill to the weekend. Right, let's get with some bloody well.